Dear students, welcome back to Brilliant Education, Doha, Qatar. So in this video session, we are going to discuss one more small concept from the sexual reproduction in flowering plant chapter. The concept is structure of female gametophyte and megasporogenesis. Let me start with the ovule structure students and after that we will discuss the megasporogenesis process. Okay, now look at here. Structure of ovule. What is the technical term of ovule? Megasporangium. Keep in your mind, this is also one of the important MCQ question. The ovule we also term as megasporangium. In our last video session, we have already seen the microsporogenesis process that is takes place in the microsporangium. Microsporangium is what belongs to male reproductive organ. Here the megasporangium or ovule belongs to where? Female reproductive organ. Let me explain the the complete structure of ovule and after that we will discuss the megasporogenesis process okay look at here the ovule ovules are attached look at here this part of ovule which attached to the ovary this area which attached to the ovary called what tell me placenta this area we call placenta do you remember in our 11th grade placenta different type of placentation we have seen in morphology of flowering plant chapter exile placentation marginal placentation parietal placentation yes or no students now this is placenta now ovules attach there is a stalk of ovule look at here this is a stalk of ovule which attached to this placenta this stalk is known as funicle keep in your mind okay funicle student in the examination they may ask diagrammatic question they may give this ovule structure and they will ask what is a b c and identify this all parts in a proper order so keep in your mind the stalk of the ovule we call the funicle okay now there is a body part look at here this is a body part which is the important and this is a body part okay this is a body part now this body part where it is origin from this is known as the after funicle what is origin the body of ovule this part is known as raphe this part called what tell me raphe i make clear and between the raphe and the funicle there is a small area this area we are calling hilum keep in your mind this area we call what it is hilum I make clear. So one part is called funicle. It is a stalk of the ovule and the body which is starting that is called the raphe and in between these two the small structure we known as the hilum and in the angiosperm the ovules are surrounded by two integumes. Keep in your mind two integumes are there outer and inner integume two integumes are there. I make clear that is the reason why we are calling the bi integume ovule. So this this is ovule. Now here this part is called the outer integum, right? This is outer integum and this one is called the inner one, inner integum. Two integumes are there, two membranes are there surround around the ovule. But if you closely look at this diagram in one area where the integumes are not completely covered, where the integumes are absent. Look at here. This is the area where the integumes are not there. That area we known as micropyle. Am I clear? Micropyle. So that area which is the below side, that means the micropyle is present below that ovary we call the anatropus ovary this is the anatropus ovary and moreover exactly the opposite of the micropyle there is a structure there is a part this part of the ovule we known as chalaza this part is called what tell me chalaza keep in your mind so one end is the chalazal end another end is what micropyle end keep in your mind and inside the ovule look at the inside the ov ovule parenchymotus diploidal tissue is present this is a very important in the examination they may ask this one this parenchymotus diploidal tissue 
fill in this ovule this is called a new cellus keep in your mind in the examination many time question have been asked what is new cellus what is the persistent new cellus okay and new cellus is haploid or diploid the different different type of questions are coming from here this area which is fulfilled with the parenchymotus tissue inside the ovule we call what new cellus student one more important thing keep in your mind this is new cellus and new cellus tissue is deployed in nature new cellus tissue is deployed in nature so this is the structure of total ovule that is a megasporangium structure so where is the diploidal tissue diploidal tissue inside the ovule that diploidal tissue is called what new cellus now we are going to start a very important concept in sexual reproduction of flowering plant chapter that is called formation of megaspore inside the megasporangium so what exactly mechanism look at here now i'm starting the structure the, uh, now i'm starting the process the process is known as mega mega sporo genesis important step important process so one question from this topic is sure so all of you focus on the board and try to understand the process or the mechanism of the formation of mega spore okay now this is a diploidal tissue inside the ovule fine that is called chalaza that diploidal tissue the cell which towards the micro micropyle end one new cellus tissue one new cellus tissue cell which towards the micropyle end okay this cell okay this cell started to mature and this cell which is behave like a microspore mother cell so this cell which towards the which place micropylar end this cell is now we call mega spore mother cell mega spore mother cell i am clear so the cell which towards the micropylar end that is a diploidal new cellus tissue cell only so that cell which is which undergo maturation to form now we are calling what that is called the mmc what is mmc stands for megaspore mother cell okay one cell only one cell so one cell it's undergo maturation to form a megaspore mother cell then that cell or that cell which towards where micropylar and keep in your mind next this microspore mother cell this microspore mother cell undergo meiosis division meiosis division do you remember the microsporogenesis process student in the in the microsporogenesis process also same process we have seen microspore mother cell undergo meiosis division to form microspore tetrad here also megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis to form megaspore tetrad look at here how many haploidal cells are forming here linear shape of the structure we know as megaspore megaspore tetrad keep in your mind tetrad that mean how many haploidal cells are there four haploidal cells are there but very very important process is there very very important topic you need to understand now now let me take the same structure here the same structure here if you replace the same structure here okay and these three cells towards the chalazal end and one cell towards the micropylar end as yes a no, student if you see if you if you replace the same structure in this ovule okay now you would identify these three cells are towards this chalazal side and the lower cell is towards what micropylar end fine but remember student very important topic here out of the four haploidal tetrad or out of the four haploidal cells three cells three cells started to degenerate this first three cells okay these three cells which towards the micropylar end started to degenerate okay keep in your mind degenerate 
If you compare this megasporogenesis with microsporogenesis, in microsporogenesis we have seen all four haploidal cells become microspore and pollen grains. But in case of female, in case of megasporogenesis student, out of four, three will be degenerate only one cell, one haploidal cell going to form a embryo sac keep in your mind this is very important moreover now tell me how many out of the four how many is going to form an embryo sac or how many is going to form a megaspore one only such development is known as monosporic monosporic important mcq what is monosporic monosporic means out of the four tetra out of the four haploidal cell three are degenerating only one cell is participating in the formation of a my, uh, embryo sac or megaspore so that process is called a meg monosporic monosporic now i'm taking one cell here okay i'm taking this one cell haploidal cell here okay this is a haploidal cell in this haploidal cell student remember three times how many times three times sequential mitotic divisions takes place mitotic divisions takes place how many times three times sequential mitotic division takes place first what happened in the first first time the first after first mitotic division two nucleus will form two nucleus haploidal nucleus will form and after that it will be reaches to the four it will reaches to what four second mitotic division four and after that that means the last third mitotic division it will reaches to tell me eight nucleus one two three four five six seven eight nucleus stage now so first two nucleus stage now okay two nucleus stage and next to four nucleus stage next eight nucleus stage so here three sequential mitotic division takes place and after that this eight nucleus out of this eight nucleus three nucleus started to move towards one side one pole three nucleus started to move towards the another pole so I'm, I'm i'm drawing the same structure here okay i'm drawing the same structure here don't confuse now look at here the same structure now this structure okay so how many nucleus upper side three nucleus so three nucleus are moving towards a one pole and other lower three nucleus are moving towards the another pole fine and the two nucleus will be in the center i'm a clear students now what happened this all nucleus are getting a cytoplasmic division also and they become a complete cell so what are the complete cell now let me draw here this is one cell here second cell here and this is a third cell fine and these two haploidal nucleus become one single cell and these two are become two cells that means two nucleus will become two cell here and this is another cell this is called a matured embryo sac this is called matured embryo sac embryo sac we can also term as megaspore mega spore remember all of you mega spore matured mega spore how many nucleus how many cells are there many times in the examination in cq pattern they are asking how many nucleus and how many cells are there in the mega spore or embryo sac matured embryo sac look at here let me count here how many nucleus here let me first count how many cells are there first three cell one two three these three cells are known as anti Podals and T podals keep in your mind, okay? Podals and this one, this one cell which is in the center having the two haploidal nucleus, we know as polar nuclei. Polar nuclei. Lower side, these two cells, these two haploidal cells are known as synergids synergids or it is also known as or i can write helper cells 
helper cells and the middle one this middle cell is called egg or we can also write what tell me female gamete female gamete keep in your mind okay students now this is the matured embryo sac now let me count how many cells and how many nucleus are there now we are going to finish now so look at the embryo sac or megaspore cells how many cells how many antipodals sir three antipodals two synergids one egg and one polar nuclei so three plus one four plus two six plus one seven so how many cells in the embryo sac seven cells okay can you count how many nucleus are there in the matured embryo sac one two three four five six seven eight so eight nucleus keep in your mind eight nucleus are there so many times the question i've been asking how many cells and how many nucleus in the matured embryo sac seven cells eight nucleus are there and moreover all nucleus all cells in matured embryo is haploid you get my point haploid so student remember if you able to recall the theory session we have already discussed from one cell one complete embryo sac is going to form out of the four tetra out of the four cells in tetrad not all four are going to become a female gametophytes or not going to become a embryo sac student only one cell is going to become a embryo sac so seven cells eight nucleus this is a structure of ovule and this is a total process is called what megasporogenesis formation of megaspore inside the megasporangium i hope you understand this is one of the important concepts student in sexual reproduction in flowering plant just revise this video once again and prepare for your examination thank you